times that's all you can. And just thank you, Lord. When words won't suffice. It's just thank you, Lord. When you're in the midst of the tough times, it's just, well, thank you, Lord. There's something in gratitude, especially to our Father who is in heaven that allows us to press through. When our heart is overflowing, even when we don't understand and we don't know why, just a simple thank you means that we're grateful for what he's still doing, even though it looks the way it looks, and even though it feels the way it feels, we still say, thank you, Lord. Can you say amen? I don't want to preach a word before the word, because we've already had four sermons, and I'm exhausted already. Jesus. I was ready to sit down, man, just let you have it. <laughs> I'll preach New Year's something, whatever you need. Good God. But there is a word, and I was wrestling with it, in fact, and it's so funny. The way that the Spirit broke out this morning, and the things that God was giving you, and talking about idols, and talking about worship, and talking about all of those things, and the message that God gave me, he remixed it a little bit as I was sitting there, so I was getting nervous, my stomach was kind of turning, but... God is amazing because he will co-sign on himself. He'll say and do things, and then just to let you know and remind you about who he is, he'll say, and just as a reminder, let's do that again. Let him hear that word again. So we're going to preach now. We're going to go to Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, Old Testament, Daniel. Don't put up my title because it's not the same title anymore. <laughs> And as we were talking, as you were speaking, Overseer, about pressing through and being at that point and going through, <laughs> I found it funny that we're going to be talking about the fiery furnace. And I thought, found it funny, all of the things that he was giving you to give is everything that's in the message. So I'm going to try and stay and behave myself and stay with my notes, but we'll see. So if you all could stand on your feet, Daniel 3 is where we're at. I'm going to do something unconventional. I'll kind of preach my way through the entire chapter, so I'm not going to read everything. I promise I won't be up here. I'm a 20, 30-minute preacher on my best day. I kind of, you know, let's get him in, get him out, let's get lunch. It's, it's my anointing, lunch. Lunch is my anointing. Daniel chapter 3, verse 8 is where we're going to start. Uh, we do need to put our uh, confessional up on the board. If you all need a Bible, stick your hand up. Before we get to the word, we're all going to recite this in unison. I'll start out with you, but I will drop out. Is everybody in Daniel 3.8? Yes. yes. If you need a second, say, hold on. Old Testament book. Table of contents is your friend. Are we all together? Yes. All right, let's start with our confession. It says this. This is my Bible, the word of God. Today, the word of God. Amen. So Daniel 3, starting at verse 8, says this. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, funny we're talking about trumpets earlier, <laughs> shall fall down and worship the golden image. Nebuchadnezzar has erected a 10-story tall golden image on which he is in commanding all of the Babylonians and all those who hear the sound to fall down and worship this 10-foot golden <laughs> idol, as you mentioned earlier. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar in furious rage commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up. Now, if you're ready, 
If you're ready, when you hear the sound this time of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, and all these instruments, to fall down and worship all that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. I love smart mouth saints. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But listen, this is, this, is, this is it right here. Verse 18 is everything. Verse 18 is everything. But if not, be it known to you, O kings, this is smart mouth right here, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Can the people of God say amen? Amen. I'm going to pray, but we're actually going to be talking about two things. One, the consequences of speaking truth to power. Number two, we need to realize that a test is coming. The consequences of speaking truth to power and the test is coming. Can we pray? Father God, in the name of Jesus, your word has already been declared. You've been in and out and through all of us in this place, Lord. So just continue to rest in here, Lord God. Deliver the word that you desire your people to hear. Through my mouth, Lord, I ask you and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. Can the smart mouth saints say amen? amen? Sometimes you gotta be so bold with it. You just have to be bold with it. We're in a, a time where things that used to be said behind closed doors and things that used to be plotted behind closed doors are now being just blatantly said in the public eye. Things that we know people have been thinking and things that certain groups of people, you all know who I'm talking about, are really getting bold with theirs. We have a blatantly misogynistic and racially insensitive and uh, irreligious man who has come into power in this country. And we're not supposed to you know, speak and preach about the news events, but there's, as Pastor said, there's shifting sands right now. Some things are going on in the atmosphere that have not happened ever in the history of this country. So the people of God, we need to kind of fine tune our ears and sort through the minutia, sort through all of the noise and the rowdiness that we hear and that we see on news and social media to hear what it is God is telling us to do in these times. So can I address some, some public issues, some current events while we're up here today? Is that all right? Let's go. So we have a group of people now who have ascended into power. And as I said, there are things that they are saying and plans that are being declared now that used to be kind of behind closed doors. I think we as a community, um, minorities in this country, uh, have always kind of known things that have been going on yeah. and the feelings that have been had by those who are in power, except, well, maybe the last eight years, but you all understand what I'm saying. Right. But now we're entering into this season where it's no holds barred. Where I don't have to hold my tongue anymore. I don't even have to care what you say. I don't have to care how you feel about what I've said. I don't care what you post on social media about me any longer. And my question, I guess, is to the people of God, oh, children of Israel, is... Why all of a sudden are we captured with a political correctness bug? Why are we infected with being mute all of a sudden? We've kind of segued into this society, a secret society at that, that we no longer publicly declare who it is that we believe in and who it is our salvation is in. We just kind of wait and talk to the prayer circle. And we wait and we call our sister friend who sits on the same row with us in church. We do all these things that we do in a ticket. We text pastor, you won't believe what these people just said. We're in places, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are Jewish who are working under a Babylonian king. They are people of God working in an organization and in a place and in a nation that knows no God. 
Maybe that's just my workplace. Okay. We're in a nation that no longer cares what the followers of Christ believe, think, or are worried about. We are in a space and time that we aren't seeing any different from the rest of the world. The only difference, in fact, between most of us, not anybody in here, is that we come to church on Sundays. That is all people can say that's different about Christians. When they see someone dressed up on Sunday, you just kind of assume, hey, there's a Christian. But the rest of the week, we have nothing to say. And we're in these environments like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego where we're called to do this or asked to do that. And we go along with it. But what I love, what I love about these three boys, these are boys, by the way. They're not grown men. These are three boys. They're being noticed, not for what they do and how they dress on Sundays, but they're being noticed and called out for what they refuse to take part in. What they refuse to co-sign on. I can just see them just standing on the side like he did what? He built what? He wants us and expects us to do what? I think the expression now is what? You expect us to do what? Fall down on face and worship who? The Babylonians were known to be pluralistic. They had multiple gods. And now we got these. And let me say this, by the way. Thank you, God. Anybody that serves multiple gods serves no God. Because the very definition of God is that they must be above all and over all and commander over all. So when you tell me you've got the God of the earth and you tell me that you're serving this God and you believe Mother Nature this and Jack Frost that, you are a fool. Because the God I serve will not stand to share his table with anybody except his children. So Babylon and this Nebuchadnezzar, we're going to call him old King Nebi. Nebuchadnezzar is too long of a word to say on Sunday morning. Old King Nebi has erected a 10-story golden structure that we are being commanded to worship. It's kind of like what's going on now. People are doing something so all audacious in this country and the people of God as much as I say it we're not doing anything different than the population Come on. we're throwing stones as much as they're throwing stones and we're co-signing on foolishness as much as they're co-signing on foolishness and I'm not saying it's not right to have an opinion but you got to sense yourself through what God said and through what the call of our life is on if you want to protest that's, that's fine but do it in the name of Jesus don't do it in the name of the Democratic Party I don't care if you're a Republican. Do it in the name of Jesus. We're waving red flags. We're waving blue flags. I want to know where the white flags are, the bloodstained banners of Christ. Stand up what you believe in. That's what these boys did. It says down... I've lost my notes. It says that... They were called up because they refused to worship. They refused to fall down. So the music played, and they refused to fall down. And some of the cronies of King Nebuchadnezzar actually witnessed them refusing to worship. Yeah. Grab them. Snitches. They said they maliciously came and snitched. They had it in their head. It's something like the Jews were being persecuted back then while being in Babylon. That sounds familiar. Yeah. If you've ever felt ashamed or unsure or even scared, it's okay to share your faith. You're in this position that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were. Can I just call them the three boys? It's a lot to say. So they're called up. And Nebuchadnezzar gives them another chance. He says, y'all tripping. Come up here. Let's talk. Now, you all know the rules. You all heard the guitar play. You heard the trumpet sound. But you didn't fall down. So, if you're ready now, that's what he said. I'm going to give you a chance now. He, in essence, without saying, he said, I dare you. I dare you because what surely awaits for you is a trip to the fiery furnace if you don't do what I'm asking you to do. So, they're faced with the choice right then and there of life or death, right. literally. Come on. We won't share our faith or say Jesus' name because we're scared we're going to get written up on our job. Come on. I'm not trying to beat y'all up, I promise you. It's God that said this this morning to me. We have to get to a place that we are as bold and as audacious and as sold out for what we believe in as those fools that are going to be living up there in the White House in two months. 
Oh, you you lit all the way? You for your cause? You're appointing who in your office? Blatant racist? Oh, well, let me tell you who I am. I just want to open my shirt up and have a cross right here. Like, let me tell you who I'm representing. You can represent all you want to, and you're white, and you're supremacist, and you know all these people, you're anti-Semites. You can represent whoever you want to, but me and I, as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you for your word last week, sir. So they're called up, and they're standing there right before the king. And I imagine they're scared, but it doesn't say that they are doesn't say that they're scared and the way that they kind of they speak back to him it's got a little sass in it oh nebby oh donald you fool says and they say do what you want in essence let's boil it down do what you want say what you will threaten what you will the god I serve. God, I serve. Yeah. The God that me and my brothers here serve yeah. Yeah, yeah. is more powerful than you. But if not, if it is his will that we be thrown into the fire, the fire, I still refuse to bow down and worship. I refuse to conform to what it is that you will have me to do. Refuse to conform to what the world would have us to do. Yeah. I refuse. Yeah. He goes on and says that Nebi was upset. We go in 19, verse 19 says, Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face had changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. So here's where we come into the test portion. Are you going to stand on what you believe in when the threat of death is on you, or the threat of loss is on you, or the threat of losing your job is on you, are you going to stand as he's cranking the furnace up? He's probably like, I'm going to give you one more shot. Keep going. Throw another log in there. Keep going. And we'll stand there, and we have a choice to make at this point. We have a choice to make every day if you're going to co-sign and share that post on Facebook that's, you know, throwing up conspiracies and throwing up this and throwing up that. you got a choice oh whether or not you're going to participate in the foolishness that happens on your job by gossiping. We have a choice. And as the people of Christ, we have a command not to conform. Do not conform any longer to the world, but yet ye be transported through the renewing of your mind. We are called to be peculiar. First yeah. yeah. Peter 2 and 9, I think is what I said. He said we're a royal priesthood, a chosen people. Yeah. We are called out and called aside, and it says to proclaim, yeah. to proclaim the good news. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into this marvelous light. We're so happy being in the dark that we don't want to get out and proclaim. We're so happy partaking in what's going on right now in this country and in this world that we don't even want to be a light. We don't want to say anything different. We don't want to be anything different. We don't want to represent anything different. Well, it's hard being peculiar. Yes. Yes. But you're called to be peculiar. Yes. You know why we're peculiar? Because we believe in something we ain't seen. Right. We believe in someone we ain't met. Yeah. We just have a hope and a promise yeah. that he's coming back when that trumpet sounds. We are holding fast to the faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were standing on that hill with the king. Holding on to their faith. As the threat came, as it got real, cranked the furnace up seven times. Be that it may, we will not bow down and worship your gods. So the story goes, they refuse. They tie them up and all of their belongings too. So we don't want nothing left of you. They take them up the hill. Throw them in the furnace. The furnace was so hot that the guys who threw them in burnt up. Your test is coming. And what you are going to have to endure is going to kill somebody else. They're not going to be able to handle it. They're not going to be able to stand by. Just the mere thought of getting close to what you're enduring is going to wipe them out. 
But the God we serve, their confession that they made publicly, they didn't. Let's pray, guys. I'm having a tough time with my job. In Jesus' name. No! They were on the top of the hill. I have this visual of all these guys just lifting them up and carrying them off like some sort of cartoon to this, this open cave that's just shooting flames out. And they're just as good. I'm straight. Because of the God I serve. You know the most comforting thing that I've been able to say in the past two weeks is all hell has been breaking loose and everybody's, I'm at work, people crying, people are losing their mind. And that's cool because it's real. People are depressed. Do you know the only thing that I can say? I'm just trusting and believing that God has a plan for all of this. That literally is all I can say. Because I'm not getting ready to co-sign on this foolishness and I'm not getting ready to walk out of my job and protest and I'm not getting ready to walk down the street with flags flying. I just know that God has a plan for all of this and it's going to work out. Unmovable faith. Unshakable faith. When the rest of the world is... Well, be that as it may, I refuse to bow down and worship what you're... The fact that we are so consumed with this is, is, is the fact that we're worshiping multiple gods. The fact that we are so consumed with the leadership of this country, it's real, I get it. But the amount of airtime in our mind and in our heart that we are giving this, and this guy and his team, like the rest of the world, is we're lining up God. Well, this is my uh, president God, and this is my economic God, and this is my health God, and this is my lawyer God. We're lining all of these things up around our room. To serve multiple gods is to serve no God. No so, your test is coming. The boys get taken up the hill, thrown into the fire. Everyone standing within earshot is wiped out, burnt up, nothing left. And Nebuchadnezzar walked up this hill and looked. He ordered the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the fiery, the fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men fell bound into the fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar, verse 24, was astonished. And rose up in haste. Right. What? Stay in the word. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said, True, O king. Verse 25. He answered and said, But I see four men, and they're unbound. Oh my God. When you allow the world to put shackles on you, when you allow the world and who's in power to keep you prisoner and tied up, you are giving them the power that should be in the hands of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You are giving them the power of God over your hand. But when Jesus gets into the mix and when they called on his name, when they professed their faith in him, he came in and said, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you right here, man. Go take this off. Unbound your hand. Hold all your stuff. And it says that they were just in there. These three boys and Jesus. He's not named Jesus in this part because he hasn't been named by Mary yet. That's in the New Testament. We'll probably talk about that in a couple weeks, right? He's not named yet, but he, Nebuchadnezzar says, and one of them looks like the Son of God. There it is. Wait, 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 wait. 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 So three go in. Four are in there. This is what he says, eyewitness. But well, watch what happens. Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door, verse 26, of the burning fiery furnace. And he declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Oh my, Nebi, how your tone has changed. Oh my. 
You saw what God did in my life, and you saw how he brought me through, and you only know it's the most high God because that's who I told you that I serve. That's who I told you was going to get me out of this. Oh, now you want to be on the team. Here's the good part. Shadrach, Meshach, and Menigo came out from the fire. Verse 27. The satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors, all those little cronies, they gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of these men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their cloaks were not harmed. And no smell of fire was on them. You don't even look like what you've been through. You don't look like what God saved you from. You don't even smell like where you've been. There's no evidence that what the world would put on you has been successful. No evidence. And I just imagine my boy sitting there like, I told you. So for all the people right now who are on the brink of their fiery furnace, know that it's okay. You're standing on your faith and fiery furnaces come with your faith. Fiery furnaces come with your faith. I don't know what your furnace is, but you are going to go through it. All of us. But you got to stand with confidence and proud. You got to fold your arms back. What else you got? Because no matter how hot the furnace gets, God is getting me out of this. And there's nothing you can say, not a law you can pass. You can try and deport me if you want to, but I don't care. Because I'm standing right here. And God is going to get me through. God is going to come in to the furnace. And it, calm down, player. We got this. Watch Nebby. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. He said, he said, servants of the most high God, come out from the fiery furnace. Now, this part right here is for anyone who says that this country has gone to hell in a handbasket or has been on a slow decline. This part is your part right here. The part that uh, are the folks that say that the Christian has no voice anymore or that this government has kicked us to the curb and that we have no power anymore. This is your part. Are you ready? Okay. Nebuchadnezzar answered. This is verse 28. said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Here's, here's your part. Are you ready? Are you taking notes? Chapter 3, verse 29 in Daniel. Therefore, this is Nebuchadnezzar. This is Nebuchadnezzar. This is the king. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that speaks against anything, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other God who was able to rescue in this way. Do you want to change your country? Are you tired of the way it's going? Start proclaiming the word of God. Start standing on your faith. This is the king who lined up his gods and said, worship them. But these three little boys bowed down and worshiped their God. And it changed the face of the nation. Babylon became a God-fearing, God-believing country based off of the progress and the efforts and the faith of three boys. We don't need an army. I just need three boys to pray and proclaim Jesus Christ. If you're tired, if you're scared for the next four years, proclaim the name of Christ. If you're worried about what may come, say, I serve the living God. I don't serve that golden statue. I serve God. There, there is an enemy. There is evil that has been unleashed. Like I said before in the beginning, there is an evil that has been lurking in the shadows that is now coming out and is out. We could do a countdown. January 20th. Now listen, listen, listen. We as people of Christ cannot participate 
in the foolishness Amen. that is going to ensue. Is. Nebuchadnezzar came into power and he lost his mind. Don't be surprised if next to the White House we got a 10 story golden statue. But the enemy, Revelation, 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 this is what I'm saying. Be too much in my word. Revelation 12 and 11. The enemy is overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the power of our testimony. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had it figured out. They said, I need to stand on my word. I need to stand on the word of God. I need to proclaim it with boldness. As much as them jokers are acting a fool on Pennsylvania Avenue, oh, I got something for you. All the smart mouth Christians are going to be quoting scripture, throwing rocks. Let's go. Let's go. Stop being afraid. This is not the time for that. I know it's a little shaky. It's a little scary because nothing like this has happened before. He said, what? On television? He appointed who? What? Shadrach, where you are. You sat down right there. I was like, yeah. Where you are, where God has placed you, is to proclaim the power of God. In your position, what you do is to proclaim the power of God. The nation is in your hands. The nation is in your hands. As soon as you sat down, I looked at you and said, oh, okay. Stop waiting for Bishop Jakes or some other person to go down and talk to this man. Stop waiting for there to be a big corralling of all the Christians. We're not having a meeting. But what you can do, and you can do, and you can do, wherever you find yourself, and this foolishness erupts. Be it as it may. But we will not. Not. Bow down and worship this God, this idol, this thing, this person. We will not. And the face of a nation was changed by proclaiming, professing, and acting in our faith. Don't be a secret saint over the next handful of years. We cannot afford it. God is sovereign. Make no mistake. He knows what he's doing. He is in control. And all he's waiting for is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to do what he told him to do. Just like he did last time. Just like he did the time before that. Just like he did the time before that. Glory God. Now is not the time for timidity. Now is not the time to consult and text and pray. Now is the time to speak in the moment. When it happens. Jesus. Jesus. All I can say is God is in control. And I know he has a plan for all of this. All I can say is that God is in control. And he's got a plan for all of this. Can you imagine Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Could you imagine being them and waiting to get thrown into the furnace? All I know is that God's got a plan. And he's going to get the glory out of this. And out of these unsure, they were pretty sure, but... I just had this feeling that they were a little nervous. That's real. A little nervous, a little uncomfortable. I can only imagine, but they stood by it, they professed it, they proclaimed it in public, and they let the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, who was in there with them, standing by your side, you're all in my word today, killing me, standing by, your side says it's going to be okay. We're going to go up this hill together. One step at a time is what you said right there. One step at a time. Let's just keep going. So the blood of the Lamb is already with you. 
The blood of the Lamb is already with you. The only thing that is missing is the power that's in Ewell's testimony. That's the only thing missing out of this equation. And I love the fact that this is in Revelation. Something's coming. I'm trying to tell you something. I, it's been six weeks and I've just been so unnerved and so restless and my stomach been upset. I've been doing cartwheels in my dreams. It's just been insane. And it was because of this. We are not Sunday saints anymore. We need to be soldiers in Christ. And soldiers for Christ proclaim truth to power.